the technical delay there. Hopefully you can hear me. Yep, sounds great. Okay, great. Well, welcome everyone. On behalf of Southern Alliance for Clean Energy, FL Sun, and the Florida Climate Alliance, I'd like to welcome all of you. Thank you for joining us today for the FL Sun Solar Co-op webinar. My name is Alyssa, and I'm the Solar Communications and Policy Manager for, for the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy. For those of you not familiar with the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy, also known as SAFE, we are a nonprofit organization that promotes responsible clean energy choices that work to address the impacts of global climate change and ensure clean, safe, and healthy communities throughout the Southeast. We are a membership organization, and we would like to acknowledge our members on this call today, as well as encourage those of you who are not members to please join us. For ways in which you can become a member and get involved, please visit our website at www.cleanenergy.org. Now, before we get into the fun stuff, the solar co-ops, I would like to take a quick moment to review the basic functions of the WebEx control panel here on the right-hand side of your screen, which you should see. To ensure sound quality, all attendee lines will be muted throughout this presentation. You can go ahead and find the three buttons along the top of your control panel. If you're having trouble hearing or seeing the slides, click the blue chat button and type in your problem so that we can help you troubleshoot. We have saved time at the end of this presentation to answer questions about today's topic. To ask a question at any point of the presentation, you can click the question mark button along the top of your screen. Make sure all panelists is showing up in the drop down menu and then simply type your question into the questions text box. We will do our best to answer the questions as many as we have time for. I know we do have a pretty large group on this call, so if we don't get to your question, feel free to reach out after the fact, and, and we're more than happy to follow up with you. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Deirdre McNabb to get us started. Deirdre is the former state president of the Florida League of Women Voters and is now the state chair of the league's campaign to make Florida number one in solar power. Deirdre? Thank you very much, Alyssa. I hope everybody can hear me and a big welcome to all of you on the call today. This is a continuing story with several chapters and already many heroes, but the heroes that are gonna play out in the future are on the call with us today, and obviously that is each of you. Uh, this is really an extraordinary story of how grassroots involvement, everyday people, are steering a clean, renewable energy future for the state of Florida, and we believe the whole country uh, of America. It started actually with a 12-year-old boy who went to see a movie about climate change and came home and told his mother in Washington, D.C., we need to go solar and we need to do it right away. And when she explored the cost after a persistent uh, urging by her son, she found that it was simply too expensive. And so she challenged him and she said, it's not gonna work unless you can go and get the whole neighborhood to go solar. Well, by golly, he got a friend and they slipped little slips of paper under people's door and 50 people turned up and 50 people ended up going solar and getting the price down and thus the concept of a neighborhood cooperative was born. The founder of the organization, Anya Schoolman, was on National Public Radio one night and a Floridian by the name of Mary Boy was listening. She pulled into her driveway to hear the end of the presentation and she thought, we need to do that in Florida. So Mary Boy, who is a neighbor and a friend of mine in Winter Park, came to me and said, how can we do this in Florida? Will you help raise the money? And together, with many other people, we were able to raise funds and get a wonderful leader called Angela de Monbrian, who's a former league president in Jacksonville, to take the helm and be the state director. And the energy, the power, and the success that we've had, I know the, the, the title of today's presentation is One Year and 14 Co-ops Later, but it actually will be one year and a half at the end of December uh, I believe I'm correct in saying there will be 21 neighborhood cooperatives that will have been launched in one and a half years. And that is due to people on the phone like you, who are volunteers, who have, who have said to themselves, 
I am going to change history. I am going to move our state forward. We are going to be part of a clean energy future. Today's presentation is not geared to tell you that you should or should not go solar. What it is geared to do is to make you a warrior in this campaign, part of a movement to take America forward into a clean, renewable future. What we are hoping you will do at the end of this presentation is feel more confident that you can contact your local Kiwanis, your Rotary, your Chamber, your book club, your closest friends and family, and say, I want to tell you this story because this is exciting and it's what can be if we all learn more about this exciting issue. And that, of course, is clean renewable power in the form of solar energy. So with no more ado, I'd like to begin the presentation with a quote by one of my favorite uh, quoters, Margaret Mead, who said, never doubt for a moment that a group of concerned citizens can change the world because in fact, it's the only thing that ever has. And each of you on the phone today are going and have the potential to set the stage for a much brighter future for our state, our country, and our planet. Okay, so here we go. Obviously, we've got the flavor of Florida with our Walt Disney uh, Mickey Mouse panels, but let's keep moving right along. Let me see if, here we go. Thomas Edison, I don't know how many of you knew that he used to live in Fort Myers, but he was a very famous visionary. And he said decades ago, I put my money on the sun and solar energy. I hope we don't have to wait till oil and coal run out before we tackle that. Well, we're not running, we're not waiting till it runs out, but we are seeing the effect that fossil fuels have on the planet and the ability of solar, very frankly, to vastly reduce consumers' utility bills. So one of the most important points, and this is why we put this slide right up at the front, solar doesn't just help the person who puts it on their roof. Solar helps everyone. And it's really important to emphasize this point because the utility spent a lot of money trying to pull the wool over people's eyes with the Amendment 1 campaign, trying to frighten people into saying that solar on some people's roofs hurts others. That isn't true, and there have been many studies to show the positive effect for everyone, but we've highlighted the Brookings Report, which did a study in 2016 and showed that when some people get solar, it helps prevent the need for expensive new power plants, which are the biggest single reason for rate increases. And those of you down in South Florida have seen, I think it's a 24, 27% rate increase coming uh, in the next couple of years from Florida Power and Light. These new power plants are very expensive and solar energy on people's roofs and utility scale and commercial solar all help us reduce the amount of energy we need and reduce and almost eliminate the need for new power plants. So you can read through the other bullet points. I don't want to go into too much detail, but the point that you really want to emphasize here is solar on at anywhere, utility, commercial, some people's roofs, that's helping everybody. And it keeps billions of dollars invested in our state, in people's pocketbooks, in companies' bottom line for a stronger economy. <clears throat> Florida is surging ahead, and that is the good news. You've heard, most of you have heard before that while experts have said we should be among the top three states in the country because of our sunshine, we in fact have been lagging anywhere from 14th to 20th. But the really, really exciting news and is such a testament to the grassroots activism that we've seen by all of you on the phone and many who have worked across the state is that Florida was just cited in PB Magazine, and I suggest you get the daily um, email into your web in email box from PB Magazine, we are now listed in Florida as having the highest growth rate in the country in residential permits, a staggering 110%, helping us get to our goal of being number one in solar. So with huge population growth expected over the next few years on this sandbar we call home, it is really critical that we expand the, uh, the use of solar energy. 
it's interesting to know, and many of you, I'm sure, are either are living in other states or have lived in other states, you've seen that Florida energy bills are among some of the highest in the country, and we actually pay 40% more than, national, than the national average. The reason, obviously, is that for many people, they have their air conditioners going almost year-round. So the bottom line, and, and this is the exciting thing right now with solar, the costs have fallen by 90% in the last several years. The bottom line is the economics now work. Jim Fenton, who many of you may have met, he's the director of the Florida Solar Energy Center uh, in Brevard County, which is part of the University of Central Florida. They're responsible for approving all solar designs. These are his words. He says with an estimated 14% return, rooftop solar is the best investment today a homeowner in Florida can make. He also says that to have solar on your roof and electric car in your garage, by the way, is the, the second smartest investment, but that's a topic for another day. So he says that four cents per kilowatt hour, which is what people are spending with co-op solar, is contrasted to 12 cents on average for what you pay for natural gas or coal. And obviously, these results are going to vary somewhat depending on what part of the state you're in and the utility you use. So here's the Florida law. And there are some really good parts to the Florida law. Anybody in Florida can put solar on their roof. Even your homeowner association can't prevent you from putting it on. And secondly, it requires utilities to buy back any of your unused power. We call that net metering. And when you talk about net metering, many people don't understand what you mean. So simply explain it that you, the utilities are required to buy back and take your unused power and resell it. Uh, thirdly, Florida consumers do not pay property or sales tax on rooftop solar installations. And interestingly, many of you or all of you worked on Amendment 4, and that will now give commercial, it'll give the commercial industry uh, many of the same advantages starting in January of 2018. And we will be launching a rollout of an education campaign on that so that the commercial uh, industry is fully up to date on the changing economics for solar for them as well. Federal law. Federal law gives anyone who pays taxes a 30% investment tax credit off their installation costs. And we'll look at some of the dollars and cents in just a minute. But just for example, if you were to purchase a solar system that costs $10,000, you would in fact pay a net of $7,000 after you take your 30% federal invest investment tax credit. So why isn't everybody adopting solar? Well, it's been very interesting for me when I give this presentation around the state, and I hope you will see the same thing when you do it. I like to start by asking the room, if it's a Rotary or a Kiwanis, please raise your hand before I begin if you have researched or considered solar for your home. Guess how many hands go up? The whole room, pretty much everyone in Florida is interested in solar. And then I ask how many of you have proceeded and gone solar? And you will see one or two or three hands raised. So why haven't every why haven't everybody proceeded? Why hasn't everybody proceeded? Two reasons. In the past, it's been knowledge, it's confusing. You get on the internet, there are a lot of different uh, links, there's a lot, so many different vendors. Uh, so many different articles and technologies, and of course, price has been expensive in the past. The payback has been many, many years. So what's the solution to this? It is the wonderful program of FL Sun, Solar United Neighborhoods of Florida. And this is a partnership between Community Power Network based in Washington and the League of Women Voters of Florida. This is a 501c3 educational outreach. And so far in the year and a half that we will have had this in place, thanks to Angela de Bonbrian's outstanding leadership, we will have launched 21 cooperatives in the state of Florida. But let's be clear, 
It is the work of grassroots citizens, like those of you on the phone, who have helped with the introductions, with the press conferences, with getting dressed in our yellow t-shirts and handing out flyers at farmer's markets, who are spreading the word. Research shows that the most powerful persuader is neighbor to neighbor, friend to friend, family to family. That is the most trusted source of information. And that grassroots approach is what has made this program and will continue to make it such an extraordinary success. So, so far in the state of Florida, we've had three cooperatives in Orange County and Orange County has now come back to us and it's going to do two more next year. We've had two in Broward. They're also coming back to do more co-ops next year. Sarasota, St. Pete, the city of St. Pete just gave us money to, to have a, uh, a full-time person in the city doing cooperatives. Alachua County, big success. Brevard, Seminole just finished. Volusia just launched. Uh, city of uh, the, the County of Miami has given us money for funding. We have a real go-getter down there called Jody Finver. Six co-ops in one year in Miami will be launched under Jody's incredible leadership. Palm Beach will launch next month. Tampa and North Pinellas launched this week. St. Augustine launched just a few weeks ago. Tallahassee will launch shortly. North Keys, Citrus, Manatee, and many more. So you can see it's really been an incredible success story. And the success is due not just to Angela's great leadership, but to the incredible contribution of time and talent by those of you on the phone and, and volunteers across the state. That is what is making this happen like wildfire. So what is a solar cooperative? It's pretty simple. It's homeowners joining together, usually countywide or in some cases citywide, hosted by Solar United Neighborhoods. And the cooperative is basically doing the great American free market approach, bundling a group's buying power and then using a competitive bidding process where members who volunteer to be part of the committee that come together, look at an excellent uh, presentation put together by uh, Solar United Neighborhoods and decide which installer is the one that they feel most confident can deliver the quality and the price that the cooperative is looking for. Uh, members have no obligation to go solar or to sign a contract. They can look at the price and then they can say, I'm going to go with my brother-in-law. There is no obligation. Uh, each homeowner who does want to proceed contracts individually with the selected installer. It is not a group purchase. It's just a group discount. So how has this been so successful? Through the use of solar public information sessions. Basically, teaching consumers, and that picture is a real uh, presentation that was done. We, we are finding increasingly standing room only presentations. The good news is you don't have to give these sessions. These are done by experts like Angela and Heaven, Mary Duboy, Michael Cohen and others who are very cognizant and familiar with all the questions that come up and it is astounding People will sit there for three to four hours if you let them asking just unending questions about solar. People are fascinated by this technology and the power that it can give. So the meetings basically provide here are more real life pictures of solar meetings, uh, solar knowledge, the benefits of the co-op, and we also do present the, some of the financing options. We are not involved in any way in the financing. We simply will present and have tabling for any groups or banks that want to offer information. So solar panel, I, want, I don't want to get too much into the technical, but you basically you put the panels on your roof, generally facing south, east, or west. And it is the inverter that converts the electricity from one type of current to another so that your house can use it. Any electricity that you produce and, and you can't use gets credited on the grid. Remember our discussion about net metering. And there are some new inverters that enable you during a hurricane or after an emergency or hurricane to be able to power some of your devices such as critical things that none of us can live without anymore, like our cell phones or fans. 
Uh, it's not all inverters, it's some inverters, and I'm sure there will be some questions about that for Angela, who will explain everything. This is a pretty important slide. This is a sample solar co-op cost breakdown. So for a smaller house, which may be looking at 3KW, you have one uh, column. And for a larger house, or one that has just outstanding sunshine potential, a 9KW. And you can see that before the, uh, the use of the co-op, you have, let's just use the 3KW. You see it's $9,000 cost. The discount, which can be anywhere from 10 to 20 percent, brings it down. And there they've been conservative with the discount they've used. Looking at a significantly lower cost with the co-op power of purchase, again, they're being conservative, as they are in all their numbers. Then from that, you take off 30 percent with the federal income tax credit, and you're down to uh, just over 4,000. Now, they've also taken off the first year savings. But let's just assume you're looking at a after federal tax credit cost of four, let's say $5,000. And if you're looking at roughly a $500 a year saving, again, I think it's conservative, you're looking at a 10% return on your investment until the 10th year when you have paid it off completely and are getting 100% on that um, investment. And I'd like if anybody wants to volunteer during the question and answer investments that have done as well or better than that, I know all of us would be interested to hear. And that's why Jim Fenton of the Florida Solar Energy Center says this is the smartest and best investment anybody in Florida whose roof works should do. So the solar payoff for homeowners, savings on electric bills start right away with a five to 10 year payback. And it helps you when you sell your house. Uh, there have been numerous studies done more in the Northeast because they have a lot more solar, interestingly enough, up there. Uh, a, their, their cost of energy is higher and B, the governments have had much friendlier policies. And they are seeing that houses are selling at a premium with solar. Uh, we have many co-op partners, and we've listed almost all of them here. Uh, rotaries, uh, faith-based communities, teachers' unions, uh, school systems, wonderful Sierra Club has been a partner, every market that we've been in. Our tremendous funders, Southern Alliance for Clean Energy, the Gulf Coast Community Foundation in Sarasota, some other private foundations in Florida, including the Berensic Foundation, and several cities and counties. Even donations out of our own volunteers' pockets. These, this has been how this has been funded, a grassroots Florida-based program to help everyday Main Street Florida citizens reduce their energy bills. So a huge thanks to our partners, and most of all, it has been everyday citizens who have heard about it and said, I need to help. This is something I need to get involved in. This is where I can make a difference. So the result of the co-op is it reduces people's utility bills. That's a picture of Mary DeBoy, her beloved Greyhound, and her wonderful husband, Bob. Um, we have a gazillion pictures of, util of uh, solar panels, but we thought that would be an appropriate one to put here. It increases property values. When you do switch to an electric car, which I hope will be soon, and do check out nextcarpledge.org, which is the league and Southern Lions for Clean Energy teaming up on encouraging people to get moving in that area, it also gives you access to electricity if you have the right equipment during hurricane blackouts. So here's a happy young family, and that's the message we want to get across. Going solar is smart, it's popular, it's fun, and it makes sense. What are you waiting for? Let's get going. Let's let the sun pay our bills, just like Thomas Edison suggested. And we need you. If you're watching this webinar today, you are a part of the solution. This is your time. This is really an exciting project to work on. You will meet and make new friends, and you will make a difference in this planet, this country, and this state 
uh, that you will perhaps never have envisioned. So go to the uh, Bureau and get your super cape out. We need you to change the world, and we're seeing that this is happening already. I'm not being facetious. This, this is serious stuff where your talent and your time will have a big uh, positive impact on your community and help your neighbors and help our state, which is in, as you know, a particularly precarious position. So if Florida doesn't lead, who will? And if you don't do it and we don't all do it together, who will? This is our chance. This is our time. So please, uh, that's my email, floridaleague at earthlink.net. If you're interested in getting something started in your county, city, state, wherever you are listening from, we had people from Texas on the last call, get in touch with me. My phone number, this is my cell. You're welcome to call me at any time, 407-415-4500. Five, nine. That's 407 415 4559. This uh, conference is, going to, is being recorded, so you'll have a chance to listen to it all over again. And remember, the purpose of this presentation is to teach you to be the teacher. And one of my favorite quotes from Eleanor Roosevelt when she went to a league meeting and she said, How can I help? I love what you're doing. And they said, We'd like you to do some public speaking on the issues. She said, oh, I'm not a public speaker and I don't know anything about the issues. And they said, we'll teach you. And of course they did. And she became one of the most famous public speakers in America. And I say that to each of you today, even if you're not comfortable giving speeches, you can learn and you can give this presentation and you can tell your friends and neighbors and you can be a part of a really exciting, important movement toward clean, renewable solar energy Let's make our state number one. Thank you so much for being on the call today. And I'd like to turn it over to Angela. But first, I'm turning it over back to, the, to our webinar presenter. Great. Thank you so much, Deirdre. And Angela, I'll let you um, say a few words if you want to address anything at this point before we get into the Q&A. Sure. Thank you. Uh, and th thank you, Deirdre, for the great overview of the program. Um, I did want to back up just a little bit. Uh, I know many of you uh, uh, thought it was, this was just about a solar information session, so I wanted to kind of clarify that, that um, we, you can check out our website, www.flsun.org, and there's actually a video of me giving a solar information session. And we have three solar information sessions that we host within all of our open co-ops. Uh, we'll come back once a month and deliver about an hour and a half presentation that is um, very streamlined. Uh, the process is fairly smooth. We touch on the basics of solar technology. We, then we touch on the solar co-op process, and then we speak to the solar economics. Many of the slides that uh, Deirdre went through in the presentation uh, we cover. Um, make it very easy, um, take the intimidation out of going solar, and then the community members, many of you are, who are probably on this uh, webinar, uh, then just go to the website and actually sign up for the co-op. So I just want to clarify that, but you can see a solar information session uh, recorded on our website, www.slsun.org. And I definitely wanted to highlight the many open co-ops that we have right now. If you're in the Miami-Dade area, there are the there are two open currently. Two just closed, two are open, and we have two more to launch in the coming months. So go to flsun.org and choose Miami. Um, pull down the screen, and it'll you can pick your co-op. Volusia County is an open co-op. If you live within Volusia County uh, region, sign up today. St. Johns County. Uh, many people recognize St. John's as being St. Augustine. Anywhere within St. John's County, uh, go and sign up. We are in Hillsborough County in North Pinellas, just launched Monday. We're very excited by the tremendous response, Just and we haven't even had a solar information session in the community. So if you're in that area, sign up uh, today. And also for the remaining of the year, Palm Beach is coming in November. And the many, we'll have the most open co-op ever come January with uh, St. Pete round two, Orange County round four, 
uh, Manatee County, Tallahassee, Leon County, uh, Jacksonville, and just firming up a couple additional. So uh, uh, stay tuned for more exciting information. And with that, we can, um, Kyle, I guess we can start taking questions. Perfect. Alyssa, do you want to go ahead and facilitate the Q&A and I, you can address the questions to either Deirdre or Angela or if you'd like to answer them yourself. That sounds great. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, so either Deirdre or Angela can hop in on these questions. Um, but the very first one was actually emailed to us beforehand. Uh, number one, was there an impact on the solar co-ops from Hurricane Irma? So I'll take that one. Um, not a negative impact whatsoever. In fact, um, I, I would can speak for myself and our two staff members within the state, as well as our parent organization, that our inboxes are overflowing with uh, people very interested on moving forward, um, the many conversations about solar plus storage. I know our, our installers throughout the state uh, are, are being called very frequently and asked the same questions. How can they, if they don't already have a battery, how can they add one? There are inverters out there that have the capability to, to maybe charge um, a phone charger or a small fan. So there are tons of questions um, due to the hurricane. All positive, we are just trying to meet the demand. And I will just say that uh, one of the questions that I get when I do our presentation is the hurricane ability to, with the solar panels ability to withstand hurricanes. Mine in, in Orlando came through no problem. I had, de you know, the yard was devastated, but the panels were great. And I have not heard a single instance of anybody actually even having damage to their solar panels. It's important because I think many of you will hear this question that people understand that there is a very, very high level of regulation in the state of Florida with regard to the ability of anything on construction, but particularly these panels and solar systems to be able to withstand the highest hurricane. So there, there are Jim Fenton from the Florida Solar Energy Center. I've seen slides he has of roofs that have blown away, but the panels are still intact. Uh, quite a remarkable situation. And the next question, I'll send this over to Angela. How does solar get insured? I know there's a lot of questions around insurance as well. Can you talk about that a little bit? So insured is, um, I think the best answer would be you would you literally call up your homeowner's insurance carrier and ask them to include it onto your homeowner's policy. Okay, this one, I'll send over to Deirdre, it's a little bit back on the hurricane topic. The question is, I read two articles that said that according to FPL regulations, those who have solar power may not use it when the power lines are down as in what happened after the hurricane. Can you clarify this a little bit more? Well, I, I, I will say a short bit, and then I'm gonna hand it to Angela to add on. Um, my understanding is that uh, in the event of a power outage, they require everybody to turn any things like solar systems off so that the linemen are not in danger of being electrocuted. However, my understanding is that there are certain inverters that are still able to work and provide a uh, meaningful level of electricity uh, to those households that have it. And at this point, I'm gonna pass this because this is a little bit technical and I wanna make sure the right answer comes out to Angela to expound. Uh, well, I think Deirdre kind of covered it up. We, that um, really is, uh, as far as there is one type of inverter that can help with that, but certainly if these are grid tied systems, certainly that are being um, sold and offered to our co-op members within all of our co-op programs. They are grid tied systems. So when the power is out, when the grid is down, your system is down unless you have a specific inverter or you have a battery backup system. And, and I believe, Angela, am I correct that the, the inverter that I've been hearing that is used for being able to power fans and uh, cell phones in an emergency is the Sunny Boy 
inverter. I did. I personally do not have it, but that's the one that I believe consumers have to ask for if that's important to them. Yes, it's the Sunny Boy inverter at, that includes the secure power supply. There, that's two different um, things. And if that's available, uh, certainly I think it's pretty mainstream, and, and it's actually um, uh, an inverter that's not brand new to the market. Um, so it's certainly something, a conversation that an individual can have with their local installer or if the installer that the co-op members choose within our program offers that, and I have to say 99% of them have in the past, that has been an option within the co-op offerings. That is a conversation that they would have with that installer, but it is the, the Sunny Boy with the secured power supply or otherwise known as SBS. And I'll let just, just jump in let, to, I was just going to clarify a couple of things too, because I know I've seen a lot of those same articles and there have been a couple where frankly the headline and the way the information is presented is a little bit misleading. So I do want to just clarify if, if you have either a battery backup or the special inverter that allows you to have this power, but you're not feeding that power onto the grid, that is perfectly legal in the state of Florida. So I know there's been some confusion of, well, even if I have batteries, there's a law that is saying that I can't do that. That's not the case. The connection with FTL is a safety issue, as was already mentioned. So they're not, they're not telling people, no, you can't use batteries if the grid is down. That's not the case. So I, I just wanted to clarify that. And I think, Deirdre, you had something else to add? I just wanted to repeat the, the word sunny boy because that's, something people might write down if they're in the process of going solar. And it is something of great interest given the hurricane that just blew through and the fact that we're likely to have more in the future. And the next question is actually on this topic. So Angela, how do I get more technical information regarding adding future, future battery storage, using solar or using a generator, a solar power generator during a storm? So we can certainly help you find resources if we don't already have those. And we also have a listserv, and many many people listening are, may be familiar with our Google group listserv. There are thousands of people on there. Many of them love to get into the weeds about technology and share their stories. That is a great platform to ask a very technical question. And as well as if you haven't already have a relationship with a local contractor, uh, we always defer to the experts, um, and certainly may, you may find more information uh, through our industry association, and their website is flasea, F-L-A-S-E-I-A dot org. But you can always contact us, too, at, through flsun.org. Thanks. So next question, Angela, how do we get in contact with each co-op recommended contractors for the estimates? Okay, well, first of all, sign up for the co-op. Um, and then depending on where the co-op is in our, our three-month process, it could be at the very beginning and we're still, we're, we'll, we haven't sent out an RFP to the group to look for an installer. Or even if you sign up after the fact, we send out a summary packet to the co-op members with the installer's uh, contact information as well as the contractor will contact the co-op member in order that you signed up and to schedule a site visit and receive um, information about your utility bill and more. But certainly the first step is to sign up and then uh, we'll, wherever you are in the process, we'll connect you with that contractor. And a follow-up question, how do we get information on the nearby co-ops? Is that on the website? Maybe we wanna repeat the website for people. Sure, sure. It's www.flsun.org, and you can find a list of our open co-ops. Deirdre, can you talk a little bit about the average life expectancy of the system? Well, my understanding is that they are warranted generally for a minimum of 25 years, and I've heard uh, anecdotally that they go a lot longer, but I think this question again should go to Angela for some uh, more factually based uh, expansion. Angela? 
Sure. So the, there's a couple different warranties uh, that come with total systems. So the vast majority and certainly the panels that have run across um, when we sent out a bid and the companies have um, sent their response are panels that are warranted to keep producing for you for a minimum of 25 years. And that's not to say that they don't, they stop working. In fact, we've heard people that is told solar in the 70s, those panels are still producing. Um, they, what their production rate just may decrease, but they're guaranteed to keep producing um, at, at a minimum 80% for the next 25 years. And then you have inverters, and inverters have warranties that can range from seven to 25 years. It just depends. And then you always have your contractor's labor and roof penetration warranties. That can vary uh, based on um, the contractor, and the, these are all questions that we ask and we research through our, by facilitating the RFP process for our co-op members. Um, Alyssa, I just want to add a couple of things just from the questions that I often get, and, and one of them is related to this, the, the length of time that it's solar panels last, and that is what happens if your roof needs to be replaced? And uh, number one, the solar panels help protect your roof, so they may, may, might last a little longer, but I believe when Angela sends out the request for proposal to the installers, one of the questions is how much is the charge to take the panels off and replace them? in the event and when the roof needs to be replaced. And so that is part of it. I know for my roof, I think it was $1,500 to take the panels off and put them back on if and when I needed a new roof. And I do believe FL Sun always recommends if you do need a new roof that to get that before you get the solar. The other question I get a lot related to maintenance and warranty is what is the maintenance on solar panels? Is there something homeowners need to do to those panels? And again, Angela will correct me, but my understanding is, particularly in a state like Florida, which doesn't get snow uh, and doesn't have a lot of leaves, that you want to just, uh, usually the, the rain just cleans it from any dust and uh, bird droppings. Those are the two main things in our state. But it, it really is a maintenance-free, uh, one of the few items in Florida, you just let nature clean it through rain. So th those are just two questions that I get relating to the the uh, productivity and maintenance and life expectancy of the panels. Great, and those specific questions actually have have come up on this webinar too. So you are reading our panel, our participants' minds. <laughs> Thank you, Deirdre. Uh, next question here: How many homes typically enter into a co-op? And this is probably for Angela. Is there a minimum number of homes? What are the geographical requirements? Is this by counties or square miles? So yes, in Florida, as opposed to our other uh, state programs, we've we've been we've really expanded the geographic region to be county based. Now that doesn't mean that we I think we'll maybe round two or three, because um, that always happens. Maybe we. Uh, make it a little smaller to neighborhood or just a municipality. So, but in Florida for now, it's countywide. And um, speaking to the number of co-op members, we have, we've found where the process runs a lot smoother when we've capped the sign up. Well, we've capped the number of people that can sign up for one given co-op to about 225 because one installer is chosen and we've shortened the sign-up period to three months. So it's three months, sign co-op is open, or it's reached 225, whichever comes first. That we have found, uh, when we first started, we had it wide open, cast a wide net, um, but it is, we, we found that it's just as effective, if not better, for everyone involved. Everyone meeting the co-op members, um, preventing delays, as well as the installer. And a follow-up question to that, and this might be in regard to Miami-Dade, why is there sometimes a need for multiple co-ops within the same county or city? Well, in the case of Miami, um, uh, the Green Quarter District wanted us to um, bring that many co-ops to that area, and so it was well planned out, the geographic regions based on their permitting structure too, and maybe moving forward, we actually look at that, especially in bigger areas such as 
Orange County, and by the way, Orange County, next year we will separate, it won't be countywide, there will be two because of the large demand. When we come around a first time, we, we have the countywide, and then we see if demand continues to come in, then we start looking at, but it's well planned out well in advance. So then we might separate into two, or we might go neighborhood by neighborhood. Yeah, I just want to, can I just add on to that a little bit, Angela, please? I think it's fascinating. Orange County actually had our largest co-op with 600 households signing up for the third co-op. And it's a wonderful thing when you, you know, you have so much demand, but it, it's just kind of unmanageable for one installer. And that's uh, how FL Sun very smartly responded, but is by saying we need to do smaller co-ops so we don't get that large a group, which is a, a bit on the unmanageable side and means people have to wait quite a, a length of time for the installer to get to them. And then the other um, thing that I've learned from working with FL Sun is that you, know, you want to have a geographic entity that people are still willing to drive to the information sessions. And because we do live in such a very large state with large cities and large counties that in some cases are the same size as other states, uh, it makes sense to begin to try to cut it down a bit, it, if that's fair to say. Thanks. Next, we have a couple of questions on the topic of condos. So I'll kind of combine these. And uh, Angela, if you want to take the first step here. Uh, so for somebody who lives in a condo, can they do that with the owner's permission? And also for people that might be on a condo board and that who want to install or even just explore installing panels, would they still go through the co-op or does this not apply to them? So, no. Um, and Alyssa, you may know more a little bit about the policy in Florida as far as, because currently right now it's a shared roof issue. It's, uh, but right now really what works, and we've had a few sign up in our past co-ops, a condo association that's been able to install maybe on their common area, uh, as well as condos um, and lar larger projects that ha can cause some delays within our co-op process. Um, so we do say, yes, let's look into it. There may be a possibility, or maybe we just um, connect them with the co-op's chosen installer, because what we found and what our parent organization has found large, complex problems working within um, policy hurdles within our, in our state can cause delays with all of our other residential co-op members. So yes, we'd love to, maybe we look at a future project that involves, um, but at the same time uh, work with states and all the other policymakers in Florida and let's, uh, so everyone can truly go solar. Yeah, and to, to chime in a little bit on the policy, the, the standard in Florida is essentially if you have solar, it needs to be going to one power meter. Um, mm -hmm. So if you have a shared roof, which is the term that you are using, Angela, in a situation like a condo, or if you are even renting and you don't control the roof or you don't own the roof, um, you're right now with our policies in Florida, you're not able to benefit from going solar. So that is something you know, we see different policies in different states that we're looking at. How can we have shared roof space or even community solar where there might only be one meter, but then people are able to get uh, like virtual net metering is something that they have in, in different states, for example, where people are able to share the benefits of going solar. But unfortunately, that's just not allowed in Florida right now. Um, but we have seen, and this might not be the best fit for the co-op, but if it's something you're interested in looking into, you certainly can still explore this outside of the co-op. If you have a shared space, like a community room or even a pool house at the, at the condo association, that would be a candidate for solar because that whole building has a single power meter. And that's something that the, the members of the association, you're probably paying for it in your monthly association fee. So it could be a way to bring those costs down uh, by installing solar on that shared space. Next question here, uh, we have about seven minutes left, so we're gonna try and get through some more. Uh, this is a tax credit question. 
I'm on a Social Security fixed income as are most of my neighbors. Can you explain how tax credits would be an advantage to me? So, and, um, and also, and also on that follow-up question, does the tax credit have an income limit? The income limit, I'm not 100% sure of, but as far as, and we get this question a lot from uh, many seniors that are on Social Security, if you don't file taxes or pay income taxes, then um, we don't believe so. However, we always defer to experts and we don't like to give IRS tax advice. We do have a section on our site, www.slsun.org, and you can type in the search um, box tax credit that has direct links to the IRS site and gives a, a general overview of deadlines of the credit, how much, when it sunsets, and the years to come. But I do not believe so, but it's certainly something that you want to look into um, further. You can check on our website and as well as the IRS link. You know, I just want to chime in a bit here. I think that this is an evolving marketplace and it, it's possible business opportunity for somebody in the future because there are a lot of people and there are a lot of organizations, nonprofits, faith-based groups that don't, uh, that also can't use that tax credit. And so what we've seen in other states is either LLCs being formed, uh, corporations, companies that uh, erect the uh, solar and uh, don't necessarily sell the energy to the consumer, but do provide in some way a payment to the consumer. In any event, I, I think this is, it, my, my point is, we don't have all the answers on this call for everybody, but solar is evolving. Florida has a lot of good laws, but it's also very backward in the area of the third party sales. As I think many of you know, we're one of four states that specifically do not allow anybody to compete with our utilities. And we haven't been able yet to break that, um, but uh, it is a work in process. And so the focus today obviously is what's working and what's working really well is flsun.org. Uh, but these are good questions and uh, we are not giving up the fight. We are continuing to look for solutions so that solar energy is available to everybody without regard to income, whether they live in a house or, or a condo or apartment, whatever. So we're, we're continuing to search for ideas and solutions. And uh, so good question. And I, I'm afraid we don't have a, a, a perfect answer right now for that one. Our next question is referring back to the, the earlier conversation about using the special inverters. Um, if the grid is down, and this is, can you still take advantage of quote unquote net metering if you have special inverters? And I'll just answer this real quickly. If you're not connected to the grid, you're not participating in net metering. Net metering is essentially getting credit for the solar energy that you are, um, that you're sending to, to the grid. Um, so, in the case of the grid being down in a power outage, if you are using the special inverter to power like your phone or maybe a couple other appliances, that is not being net metered. Now, when the grid goes back up and your regular system reconnects to the grid, then you're back in business with net metering. So, that that special inverter, the funny boy that they that we were talking about earlier, that's for a limited time, you know, in an emergency situation. But before and after the grid is down, you can still be participating in net metering. Okay, next question here, unless anybody wanted to add on to that, dear Dora Angela. Nope. Thanks. All nope. right, we'll move move right along here. Um, I have a question and I know this has come up on the listserv. Are Elon Musk solar roof available for the Florida co-ops? And also, are we on the verge of any leaps forward in solar technology in the next year or two? So we get that question all the time. And um, so I do want to say we wrote a great news piece about this and really did some research across all of our state programs. And you can find that in our news section on www.slsun.org. 
and we further research it just specific to Florida. So what we know of right now is that number one, they're not available. Um, they're not gonna be available for some time in Florida. And even when they are, there may be, very, there may be many hurdles that they're going to have to um, go up against as far as the safety, the actual structure, as well as the cost involved. And then with our co-op structure, we send out the request for proposal to installers local and around the state. And no one knows, number one, when they're gonna be available, if or when they're gonna be available in Florida. And then who is going to be the preferred installer for these and will that installer bid on our co-op? So these are all unknowns that we're looking at years um, to answer. But as of right now and in the near future, we don't, um, see that coming within our co-op program, as well as they're still, when they come here, they're going to be relatively expensive still. And again, you can learn more on our, on our new section on our website. Can I add one element to that? Not about the Elon Musk, but I, I have gotten the question oftentimes, you know, with the way the prices have fallen on solar panels, should I wait? You know, does it make sense to hold off? And I think it's a little bit similar to the Elon Musk solar roof. Should I wait for the Elon Musk solar shingle because people think it looks so very cool? Uh, and, and the answer that I've heard Jim Fenton at the Florida Solar Energy Center give, which I think is a good one and it's why I'm repeating it, is he says uh, only if you have a better place to get uh, a 10 to 14 percent return on your money. Otherwise, now is the time to do it. Um, from what I've heard from installers, they really don't expect to see the cost of solar panels falling uh, in any significant degree much more. And in fact, there's some concern now about some tariffs that uh, that's a whole other uh, case that some American solar manufacturers have, have launched. But the point is the return is such that 10 to 14 percent return which jim jim fenton is is uh, suggesting is reasonable on what floridians can get uh if if you decide to delay that's what you're foregoing and so that should be part of your decision making process and i think that's helpful to put in there and on that note i think that's a good place to wrap up we are at the end of our time here. Unfortunately, I know there were more questions that we did not get to, but we will be sending up, uh, sending around follow-up, and we do encourage you to continue asking these questions, and we'll be answering as many of them as possible. But thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. I know we had a really full virtual room, and we appreciate your attendance and your questions. Today's presentation has been, report, has been recorded and will be available on the webinar ar archive, and I hope that we can also send an email um, with a link to the recording as well. Also, and if Alyssa, you did enjoy... Alyssa, just one Go quick ahead. point is the presentation, which we hope people will be giving all across the state, is going to be on the floridavoter.org website. That's the league's website, and I would suggest that you perhaps you could send it out to everybody as well. Uh, so that they have it in their inbox and can pre use it for presentation purposes. Uh, and that, so the league website is thefloridavoter.org and hopefully you'll send the presentation out and people are welcome to call me at 407-415-4559 on my cell. Thank you. Thanks, Deirdre, and yes, that's a, that's a great suggestion. And so just to wrap things up, if you did enjoy today's presentation, uh, please do consider joining SAFE so that we continue to provide webinars like this. Again, our website is cleanenergy.org, and all of this information, all these different websites and resources will be emailed out so you don't have to worry about scrambling around to write it down. But thank you again, everybody, so much, and have a wonderful afternoon. Take care.